Hello, it's Mark from Lightmap, and we're going to light this watch with Cinema 4D, Octane, and with the help of HDR Light Studio. So this front view of a watch here, this is a reference image that I've found, and this is the kind of lighting that we want to create. So we've got the bezel here, we've got this reflection, and it looks like two large uh, light panels where there's a graduation of light up from this edge and a graduation from there. And then we seem to have a bit of a highlight here that's also reflecting in the strap there. And the same at the top, we come to this highlight and that reflects in the strap up here. And then there's another reference image which is fairly similar. So let's try and do this with the HDR Light Studio. So we've made a new project, so we're ready to press the start button in the connection panel. Okay, so the layouts that I've got here for the interface is very much the standalone uh, layout, but I've opened up the Cinema 4D Octane panel as well and dragged that into the center here uh, because we're gonna do all of our light painting and everything in here. So we can maximize this view and just drag around just to make this layout a bit more comfortable. Okay, so we are ready to start lighting. So I'll press the play button. This will start the interactive render in Cinema 4D and Octane and stream it in uh, to the HDR Light Studio interface, which is great. And then we don't actually need the LUT applied to the view because that's already applied uh, when the image is streamed to us. So we just change that LUT to none. Okay, we're ready to start lighting. So let's just turn down this gradient a little bit and find uh, a big soft box and drag and drop that and put it in the front of this uh, watch face. Let's move the handle to the bottom, click on the face again here, we'll make the light brighter and then we'll scale it up as wide as it can go and as tall as it can go. Okay so in the reference image we've got the uh, reflection in the bezel and you can see here, even with this light really big, it's not actually making its way around to the edge. It's just reflecting in the face. And that's because of the angle of this bezel. So just to see how far the light would need to go, if I make a soft round light and click on the bezel and make another one and click on the bezel here, you can see that the light would actually need to extend all the way to here and all the way to here in order to start to be reflected in the bezel. So we're actually going to need to take a different approach to lighting this shot to get that same lighting effect seen in the reference image. So we'll select the lights and we will delete those and we're going to do all of this lighting using the gradient background which wraps around the entire scene. Uh, so that will allow us to get this lighting effect in these bezels. So with the gradient selected, we'll come down here and we'll open the graph for the value ramp. And then we can double click to add points to this ramp and start to drag those around to get the effects that we want. So already you can kind of see, see that effect and you can see it's working in the bezels, which is great. Now, I'm gonna change the interpolation mode here to Bezier between the points so we get lots of nice control over these smooth curves. And then I'm gonna turn on log and simply put what log does is this ramp is linear, but when it is used uh, and when it's seen in this uh, view that will have a LUT applied to it to display the values get moved into the LUT. So the darker values of the ramp get pulled up to be brighter. And it means that using this ramp, you lose the control that you want. So if you turn on log, what you see in this uh, ramp will be more accurately shown inside of your render view. So when I work in a graph, nine times out of 10, I turn on the log button. Okay, so now we can carry on and start playing with the values to get that lighting look that we want. Okay, 
Okay, so everything's a bit dark, so we'll just change the brightness of the light and boost that. And we want it to look nice in these bezels. What I'm going to do is actually put a background behind the watch by placing another light. So let's double click to add that light and then we'll place it using rim uh, mode on the light paint there. Click in the middle of the watch and that's now in the perfect position. And we will solo that light and we can scale it up. And if you scale it too far, you can see it starts, the lighting starts to creep around the edge of the watch. We don't want that. We just want a nice backdrop and maybe a few glancing bits of white. Um, so probably about that size is fine. So I can now see that gradient and we can see that it's still a little bit on the dark side. So let's just take that up a third of a stop and another third of a stop. So that's just got slightly too bright, but if we open up the graph, we can just tweak with that and move these points just so we get exactly the look we want. Okay, so I'm happy with how this is falling off on this edge here. I think we've got a nice look there. So I'm going to OK that. So the next thing to do is add uh, a light at the top and bottom here. So we'll create a soft round light from the toolbar. And now click on this top bezel here. And then I'll apply log onto that light as well. And we'll make it brighter and larger. So I like how that's created that highlight there. We'll just make it even go a little bit bigger. That looks nice. So we can duplicate Control D that light and then click on the bottom here. And then we've moved it to illuminate the bottom strap here. And I'll turn down the brightness a little bit on that one. Okay, so that's looking really nice. So the face of this watch I can see this kind of visible horizontal line because it's going all the way around the watch. So what I want to do is create a light to kind of control the light and reflection going in the face. So I'm going to make a soft round light. I'm going to click in the middle of the face so that the light is reflecting in it. I'm going to change its color to red and adjust the alpha ramp by adding another point, making that white so it's not as soft and then we'll just solo that light and here we can scale this so we can kind of see the overall effect of this light so we're going to make this light black shortly uh, to block the light but if it was too small it's not really having the effect we want so we're just going to scale it up so it's big enough to kind of control the light reaching the face uh, but not affect the model too much so I think probably about that would be fine. So I'll unsolo that light and make its brightness zero. And then it doesn't matter what color it is. If its brightness is zero, it will be black. And then we must change the blend mode to over. Okay, there you go. So we've basically got this soft black light in the front. If I hide that light, you can see the face is brighter and there's a visible line. Then if we turn it on, yes, the face gets darker, but we get rid of that line, which is good. OK, so now we'll pick one of our preset lights. Uh, let's say this one, and we will drag that and drop that onto the face. And we'll scale it down, and we just want to add a bit of interest onto the face of the watch. So I'll solo the light, and then we can turn up the brightness of it. decide exactly where we want it positioned and the thing is here we're basically creating some illumination back into the face and then we're creating an interesting reflection so I need to scale that up a little bit more and then just turn down the brightness so we've got some nice shadows coming from that 
it's making the material look more gold as well because uh, you've kind of got the bright areas and the dark areas so that looks quite nice if I just unsolo that so we can look at that in the context of the rest of the watch I can make that a little less bright but I like the way that is looking so that looks good I'd like to control a bit how the light is working here we've got this bit of a black line on this knurled dial thing here so let's get another light and drop that onto this edge here so it reflects there and let's solo it and then we can always just bring that around a little bit more but you can actually see that then starts to reflect in this bezel so if I keep moving with that there we go we get a nice bit of a reflection here and that starts to control that there so if we then turn that and I turn that light to be a bit brighter maybe even bring it a bit closer scale it up a little bit solo it again yeah so we've created a nice little highlight along the edge on that side so I quite like that as well so overall I'm quite pleased with that lighting I think one thing we could do is maybe try and create a couple of little highlights a couple of little glints on this model and at this point what I'll do is I'll use HR Light Studios render view and I'll press play and import the scene and change the camera to the front view and I'll just change the shader to look a little bit more like a metal so make it black index of refraction 5 and turn that reflectivity up and we'll change the resolution to 400 by 400 and then I'm going to zoom into this detail here and create a soft round light and use light paint to position that there and then boost the brightness of that just drag that onto that edge okay so if we then solo the light we've made a nice little highlight and if we fit all in the view we can actually see that that light is affecting quite a lot of the watch and we don't really want that so again I will zoom into this area uh, probably turn the background on at the same time as well and then just move that to say on there and then let's so if we scale that light down a little bit and we'll need to move it around a little bit again this is all quite precision stuff actually positioning this There we go, that's what I was aiming for. So I was trying to create some glints just to kind of bring the surfaces alive a bit. So we've got this knurling here that is picking up really nicely just to bring in some little highlights on there. So I like that. Um, I'm tempted to duplicate that light and solo the background as well and try the same thing down here on this edge. So let's uh, do a zoom, region zoom light paint around here to catch a highlight uh, fit all let's see just those yeah so I've got a nice little glint down here I'm going to scale that down a bit turn down the brightness of it a bit and then unsolo those two little highlights and if we go back to our cinema 4d view we can see that's all looking quite nice so I'll turn off those little glints and they don't make a huge difference but they just bring it alive they're just like the knurling here they bring it alive a bit so I'm quite happy with that lighting so we will finish the process now uh, by rendering this out at higher resolution so we'll say 5k we'll browse to the octane 
folder. We'll call the map Lighting Octane. Save and render. So now we're calculating the high res final HDRI map that is being updated then inside of Cinema 4D and Octane. Excellent, so now I can stop HDR Light Studio using the connection stop button. And this Cinema 4D scene now is just using standard Octane lights created with HDR Light Studio. And this can now be rendered anywhere on any machine, even without HDR Light Studio license. And let's, uh, let's just save the project as well so that the embedded HDR Light Studio lighting design uh, is stored inside of the Cinema 4D scene. And then now we can basically render the final image. Um, so if I just go to render, edit my re render settings, let's do 3000 pixel by 3000 pixel render. And then we'll go to render, render to picture viewer. And then we will render the final shot. Okay, so there's the final shot. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can download the model. Um, details are below for that. And you can go and take HDR Light Studio for a trial and use it with Cinema 4D and Octane uh, to produce results like this. So thank you for watching. Bye.